Well, the challenge for me today is to be uh, brief, which uh, I often have, tr have troubles with, and uh, hopefully my voice not conking out. It's uh, Tim Drudge here once again. It's a view from the South Stands, and it's late Sunday afternoon, uh, the day after TFC's uh, memorable 1-0 uh, home win. Uh, to kick off uh, at least the home portion of the 2016 Major League Soccer campaign, a 1-0 uh, victory uh, against a very good team in FC Dallas. Now the Argo stuff I've talked about and written about in this space ad infinitum and I'm sure it'll be a topic of conversation later this year when the CFL team actually starts playing games on that pitch. I'm going to leave that conversation uh, for now and we'll definitely come back to it in this space later. Uh, but I just want to very quickly talk about the roof uh, my seats at BMO Field are in the first four rows uh, in section 113 in the south end of the stadium. Well, hence the name of the blog, right? Uh, and uh, my seats were covered, uh, at least vertically they're covered. Uh, there was a little bit of rain last night. I didn't see any rain fall on me. Uh, my big concern, obviously, with the, uh, with the south end, uh, uh, the south end uh, cover is the huge gap between the top of the uh, the section of the concourse and then above obviously they've done that for uh, uh, for football and they've done that for the uh, for the winter classic as well or maybe to expand seats going forward uh, but that's a bloody wind tunnel and that's going to be especially with the prevailing winds coming in off Lake Ontario my big concern uh, is that the way the roof is designed is going to amplify uh, the wind uh, onto the pitch and make it a little more difficult for the players again first day we'll see how that turns out but uh, the roof itself looks and, and dare I say feels uh, very imposing and I'm not just talking about the roof over our section I'm talking about the roof uh, on the east side and also the roof on the west side as well uh, one of the things uh, I noticed is uh, as part of my uh, singing and yelling last night again that's why the voice is completely roached today uh, and I'm not sure if this was all down to the roof maybe it's just got to do with the fact uh, that uh, all of the supporters groups are back right now after uh, uh, you know five six months away uh, whether it's our rust or whether it's the fact that the uh, the sound reverberating and echoing off the roofs uh, uh, made it a really challenging last night for the supporters groups to get into sync when it comes to their singing and chanting some of the songs uh, have answers and responses uh, and they felt a little off last night. So I'm thinking maybe on first impressions the roof does amplify things uh, fairly significantly and I think it's going to take a little bit of adjusting for the supporters groups to find their find their sea legs and get uh, uh, get their singing in perfect harmony as they say. Now uh, on to the game itself. Uh, another clean sheet absolutely fabulous defending. Uh, Stephen Betashore was a beast. Drew Moore was a beast. Clint Irwin, uh, when called upon to make uh, a two saves, one in particular, a, a quick little break uh, uh, from uh, Dallas Dangerman, Fabian Castillo, uh, in like the 50, 57th, 58th minute, something like that, a, a clear on break, a really nice play from a good team in Dallas. Uh, when, uh, when needed, Clint Irwin backed up uh, uh, the defense, but barring one or two chances, for uh, a team again, one of the best offensive units in Major League Soccer, top to bottom, from the from the back on out. Uh, I think TFC did a, did a superlative defensive job uh, of shutting them down. Dallas is absolutely one of the best offensive clubs in Major League Soccer, and uh, keeping them uh, uh, to uh, to uh, to a no goal response uh, is quite the accomplishment for the back. There is a back six TFC if you include Bradley. Uh, in that game as well. Uh, one of the things I really liked as well yesterday was I liked the performance uh, of one Mr. Josie Altidore. Obviously he's a striker, he's here to score, but uh, he's not a one-dimensional uh, kind of a player. He's got some, some significant talents uh, uh, that I think Greg Vanny and Toronto FC have been doing a pretty good job of harnessing, uh, especially in the last few games in particular. Uh, he had a couple of chances last night, and I think, again, Vanny mentioned it in his post-game post video comments as well, uh, that uh, he thinks once the floodgates open for Josie, they're going to start going in. It's just a matter of, you know, the strikers getting that, getting that rhythm and getting that uh, cycle of scoring going. 
he did everything else magnificently last night except score. He held up the ball. He, he beasted around uh, uh, some really big, really dynamic Dallas defenders. Zimmerman, in particular, is a, is a mountain of a man, uh, and Altador made him look very, very small uh, yesterday evening. He was holding the ball up really well. He was bringing other players in. He was creating uh, some additional space uh, for Endo and for Javinko. The goal that Endo scored, by the way, uh, Sabasa Endo scored the winner off a uh, off a Javinko assist, and I'm going to get to the goal again in a second. I want to mention something else about it, but uh, Endo got all of that space because uh, Altador was right behind him, dragging uh, defenders with him left and right. So uh, sight unseen, in, in, in maybe to a lot of uh, observers last night. I think Josie Altador quietly went about his uh, went about his business, did really really well, and in my humble opinion, he's my man of the match. Uh, for the first home game of 2016. Now back to the goal. Uh, again, one of the things that uh, uh, being in the South End of the Stadium uh, doesn't allow you to have is it doesn't allow you to have that that television vantage point, so to speak. Uh, obviously, a lot of us watch uh, soccer games on television. We watch TFC away games on television, so we're used to that uh, high, uh, you know, 50/50 view uh, of the field, and we're used to seeing plays develop that way. Now, on Endo's goal, I didn't really get a chance to see uh, in its entirety how that play developed. That play developed from a boss defensive play from, uh, uh, from, uh, from Michael Bradley, uh, a great pass from uh, Bradley to Johnson. Johnson made another great long pass to uh, Sebastian Javinko. He dragged a couple of defenders around. He flipped the ball into Endo. Altador grabbed a couple of defenders with him and Endo was able, uh, calm as a cucumber for a rookie, uh, to put the one ball into the net, the one goal the TFC needed to secure the win. So uh, yes, Javinko was in on all the goals. Yes, Endo put the ball in the net. None of that happens without the sterling work uh, of Michael Bradley and Will Johnson. Now, as you can tell, my pipes are getting progressively worse, so I'm going to go gargle some scotch or something, I think, to celebrate. Uh, so I'm going to end this uh, by saying thank you very much for watching. Uh, we'll have another video blog up after the Vancouver game uh, next week. Uh, congratulations to TFC on their home opener. Uh, well done to uh, the, uh, the off-pitch uh, staff as well for putting on a good effort yesterday, I think. Uh, uh, a lot of people are, are, are going to be very happy with what they see uh, at the new BMO field as we go forward. Again, the Argo stuff, uh, we'll be talking about that, of course, in the months and, and sadly years ahead. Uh, but before I uh, sign off, I just want to tell you I did manage to take a little bit of video on my tablet yesterday uh, at the stadium in the South End. I want to uh, tack it on to the end here uh, to show you exactly what it felt like last night. Uh, uh, in a very magical atmosphere as Toronto FC defeated FC Dallas 1-0 at home to kick off the home campaign. I want to thank you very much for watching. Have a great week. Come on, you Reds, and we'll see you guys next uh, weekend uh, after what hopefully will be another win, maybe even another shutout, who knows, against the Vancouver Whitecaps. Thanks for watching.